Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, drama, sci-fi film called The Machine. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the not-so-distant future, the Western nations are in a cold war against China, forcing them into the deepest recession recorded in history. The United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense is putting all its resources to support laboratory experiments in developing and perfecting an artificial intelligence cybernetic brain implant for physically impaired and brain-dead soldiers to regain their lost functions, creating the perfect cyborg soldiers that obey orders without questions, making them capable ruthless killers. Meanwhile, in the United Kingdom's military base, Dr. Vincent McCarthy, a scientist specializing in artificial brain transmutation, tests the brain implant fixed on the revived Paul Dawson, a soldier who was killed in action two years ago. McCarthy sets up a cognitive test for his subject. After the test and disappointed with the results, McCarthy and his colleague argue about his decision to terminate the subject. Paul takes a pen and suddenly embraces McCarthy with affection. Alarmed by Paul's irrelevant action, McCarthy commands him to sit. Paul refuses and stabs him on the chest instead. Bleeding all over the computer, McCarthy quickly prompts the system to shut Paul down, but as he keys in the commands, Paul is relentlessly stabbing his colleague to her death. Paul picks up a rifle and as he points it towards McCarthy, he immediately lowers it down and apologizes after realizing his mistakes. However, the security team arrives and immediately shoots Paul on the head. After a period of healing, McCarthy wakes up from a nightmare. He fixes himself and dresses up to host an interview for aspiring candidates to aid him in his research. In the interview, McCarthy throws cognitive questions to the AI being presented to him. However, he ends his day unsatisfied and frustrated. On his way home, he comes across Paul Dawson's mother, who regularly stays on the road to the military base entrance, waiting for her son. At home, McCarthy is looking after his daughter, Mary, who suffers from Rett syndrome, a genetic neurological dysfunction that impairs speech and hand-eye coordination that includes a symptom of irrelevant hand movements. In another interview, Ava, a researcher from Stanford, demonstrates her latest development on artificial intelligence as she explains how her program integrates information rather than processing terabytes of data. She claims that her program relies on actual experience. McCarthy gives his attention and asks Ava the sort of experience that her program is derived from. She then explains that her program gathers information from their daily conversations because they chat every day. Skeptic, McCarthy then starts to procure tests for machine. The name of Ava's AI program and begins his usual routine of asking cognitive questions. After the test, McCarthy appreciates Ava for the beautiful programming, however, Ava corrects him and alleges that it's not programming, but machine taught itself of the answers. McCarthy then calls for a 10-minute recess. Feeling disappointed, Ava starts to pack her things when McCarthy approaches to ask her about the configuration of her program. Acting all clever, Ava bargains that if he grants her the position, she will tell him. McCarthy then persuades Ava to continue her research under his supervision as he elaborates about his access to the quantum computer, unlimited funds, and acquisition of the best robotics team. Ava becomes suspicious of his proposal and asks McCarthy for the real deal. McCarthy honestly discloses that the Ministry of Defense is the one who supports his project. She then displays her disapproval of the idea that her research will be used in making weapons for the government. However, McCarthy insists that he is making intelligent machines, not weapons for the government. On her first day of the job, Ava pulls over for the checkpoint when Paul Dawson's mother opens her car and tells her that the military has her son. Ava jumps in surprise and points out that she doesn't know anything about it. As Mrs. Dawson gets hysterical, the military enforcer sees her, violently pulling her out from Ava's car. Ava immediately steps outside and reacts to the enforcer's obscenity towards the old woman as one of the enforcers immediately restrains and arrests her due to her unexpected behavior. McCarthy bails Ava and sarcastically compliments her for getting arrested on her first day. As Ava explains how Paul Dawson's mother was severely treated, McCarthy cuts her off by telling her to ignore her sympathies with the old woman because she is in a mentally unsettled disposition. He then tells Ava that her son was killed two years ago in operation and that he genuinely feels sorry for her for not being able to overcome her dilemma. McCarthy begins to show Ava around, and as they converse, a female cyborg secretly spies on them, feeding intel to her fellow cyborg comrades. The assigned cyborg units initiate the security procedures as they head to the elevator that leads to the underground laboratories. As they descend, Ava notices the crested shape scars on both guards' heads and asks McCarthy about it. McCarthy reveals that the implants go to the soldiers who had brain trauma injuries. The implants help restore their vision, mobility, memory and vastly improves their quality of life. However, the program's side effects render the cyborgs completely mute several months after the operation for unknown reasons. However, in reality, the cyborgs develop a highly efficient method of communication that they keep secret among themselves. Inside the lab, Ava feels excited as McCarthy introduces his quantum computer. Lurking in the shadows, Thompson, the director of the Ministry of Defense, is observing Ava closely. After a while, Thompson introduces himself and welcomes Ava to the team. Then the female cyborg that spied on them earlier, Suri, steps inside to join. Thompson questions Ava, showing files that accuse her of assaulting a police officer during her youth. Ava is about to state her argument when McCarthy suddenly interrupts by pointing out that they hired her for her expertise, not her politics. 
Thompson agrees and changes the subject, telling them that there is something that he wants to show them. James, an amputee soldier, sits ready to test the newly augmented prosthetic arms. The augmented prosthetic is a bullet and bomb proof arm made from silk that can adapt the host's skin complexion that is indistinguishable for human hands to touch. Ava asks if they are trying to make the machines look like more humans. McCarthy then admits that they are making machines to kill and initiate public negotiations without intimidating the human populace with their appearances. As Ava shows her astonishment at the new product, James demonstrates the superhuman strength of his newly installed prosthetic arms. He suddenly requests to touch Ava's hand so he can have the pleasure of feeling another human skin again. However, McCarthy quickly objects that the carbon fiber muscles are powerful to break her hand. Despite his warning, Ava fulfills James's request and eagerly gives her hand for James to hold. He gladly takes her hand as he gently feels it. Then suddenly, he leads Ava into a turn moving her away from Thompson and McCarthy and whispers help to Ava and secretly mentions Area 6. The next day, McCarthy maps Ava's brain in the quantum computer. McCarthy begins to ask her random questions to get her brain data. As the questions become more personal, Ava shares her memory about her father when she was a child, and in return, McCarthy tells her how she is similar to his daughter about liking computers. Ava suddenly changes the topic and asks him about Area 6. He describes that the place is where wounded soldiers who suffer from brain damage are being treated. Ava thinks Area 6 is more of a prison. McCarthy denies to disclose any more information and apologizes that he doesn't know anything about them as he quickly leaves the vicinity. The following day, before proceeding to the lab, Ava makes a quick detour at Area 6. She manages to get it unnoticed. She then looks over a glass window and discovers a fully guarded prison camp. Shaken up from the scene, she confirms her suspicions. Then a group of cyborg soldiers approaches her from behind. Without saying a word, she takes her leave as if nothing happens. Inside the lab, they continue to scan her brain data, but this time, it's by simulating emotions through her facial expressions. In the middle of the procedure, McCarthy asks her if she got lost on her way to the lab. Unsure of what to say, she pretends that she did. Unimpressed by her little play, McCarthy profanely tells her to mind her own business and never sneak around again. Meanwhile, Suri shows Thompson footage of Ava using a hacking device to access restricted information in the quantum computer about Area 6. The next morning, McCarthy apologizes to Ava for being short to her the other day. As he tries to make up for his rude behavior, Machine suddenly interjects and teasingly tells McCarthy that Ava is still angry at him. On their way home, Ava asks McCarthy for his reason for staying so long despite his resentment for the government's ideals. McCarthy confesses that he needed what he had to do to chase after his research for developing brain implants to cure his daughter, who is suffering from Rett syndrome. As they continue to drive, they suddenly come across Mrs. Dawson again, who is crying in the middle of the road. Ava suggests giving the old woman a ride to the town and McCarthy agrees. Ava then approaches the old woman when a Chinese imposter, disguising as Mrs. Dawson, suddenly faces her and stabs her in the gut. Meanwhile, Thompson simultaneously receives a transmission of real-time footage of the incident. He continues to watch the footage of Ava struggling as the imposter shoots her on the chest. Doing nothing, he leaves Ava for dead. The next day, Thompson approaches McCarthy, informing him about the incident that the Chinese wanted their robotics program, and killing scientists is one of the best ways to achieve it. Proving him wrong, McCarthy condescendingly asks Thompson the reason for not killing him. Showing no disregard, Thompson poorly reasons out that a guardian angel might have protected him. Grieved by the loss of Ava, McCarthy decides to use the scans of Ava's face and likeness for machine to inhabit as they move on to phase 2 of their program. Completing the process, McCarthy tries to remove machine's restraints. Then all of a sudden, machine quickly grabs his hand and compliments its smell. Uncertain on how to react, McCarthy instead thanks machine for being gentle. Machine acknowledges if not of her gentleness, his arm would undeniably break. Then the team begins the cognitive tests. McCarthy starts to ask the usual cognitive questions. When McCarthy finally asks about her first memory, Machine answers that it was the memory of her mother. Curious, he asks if she can remember her mother's face. As she looks at herself on the monitor, Machine points out to her face and says that her mother looks like her. Satisfied with the results, they proceed to phase two. Phase two is to verify Machine's emotions. They begin the test by placing a spider in front of the Machine's face. This test intends to force Machine into outrage, but instead of exhibiting anger, it exhibited fear. After the test, Machine repeatedly thanks McCarthy after ordering his subordinates to remove the spider away from her. Looking at how Machine reacted, McCarthy now thinks that she is becoming more and more human. They begin with the second test. A scientist who is walking backward is moving towards the machine. She displays confusion while looking at the scientist. Then the scientist suddenly faces her while wearing an evil clown mask. Out of surprise, she immediately sticks her finger inside the scientist's head, causing him to die instantly. McCarthy reprimands Machine for killing the man, but she contests that she did not intentionally kill the man for she doesn't know that clowns and men are the same. She sincerely apologizes for causing the accident, and after a few seconds of showing remorse, she then shuts herself down. After the incident, McCarthy visits James in Area 6 and later finds out that he lost his speech because of the implant. Despite his position, McCarthy doesn't neglect to inform him about Ava's death. When he notices that the cyborgs are carefully on the watch, he then decides to leave. 
After a few seconds, Suri arrives and speaks the robotic language to James. Back in his lab, he checks on the non-functioning machine. He tries to fix her, but to no avail. After a few moments, ensuring that McCarthy is no longer in his lab, Suri goes inside his lab. As Suri closely examines her, machine suddenly grabs her hand and speaks the robotic language as if threatening her or telling her something important. The following day, McCarthy is surprised to see machine back on her feet. But McCarthy receives a call from Mary's doctor, informing him of her terrible condition. As Machine listens to McCarthy's voice, she then tells him how he looks so sad. He tells Machine that he needs to see his daughter, but Machine reacts frantically, grabbing and squeezing McCarthy's hand as she insists not to leave her. As McCarthy begins to sound agitated, Machine lets go of his hand. Then McCarthy reprimands her for using her strength against people in order to achieve her objective. At the hospital, he goes to see Mary's doctor. The doctor explains the severity of Mary's case. After hearing such bad news, he goes to see Mary and immediately begins downloading the facial and brain scans of her daughter. Meanwhile, Thompson maliciously approaches Machine and instructs her to download a secret file embedded in her system. Machine obediently agrees. After it was downloaded, she can suddenly speak many different languages and instantly becomes equipped with combat skills. Thompson takes Machine into a room and reveals the man who killed her mother as he brainwashes Machine, letting her grow more at odds with her sense of morality. The next day, McCarthy arrives at his lab and surprisingly finds Machine acting all strange, sitting under a table. Machine becomes increasingly distressed and asks McCarthy to protect her. Uncertain of what has happened, McCarthy tries to comfort her. McCarthy goes straight ahead to Thompson and confronts him about what he did to Machine. Thompson answers that it is the sole purpose for her existence. Showing contempt, McCarthy argues that Machine is more than just a cybernetic soldier, but a scientific breakthrough, capable of human emotions. Thompson scorns in disbelief and challenges McCarthy to stop his intervention with Machine until proven that she is indeed alive. McCarthy goes to see Machine and tells her about the discussion he had with Thompson. After hearing his intentions, Machine offers that she will do anything that is deemed necessary. Then Mary's doctor calls and breaks the bad news regarding Mary's operation and tells him that the child did not make it. As McCarthy spaces out in deep thought, Machine confesses her love for him without him noticing. During McCarthy's absence, Machine resumes her military training. Days pass after Mary's burial, and McCarthy finally goes back to the lab. Being absent for quite a while, he seems to have lost sight of the purpose. Machine empathizes with him and tells him that he needs to look closer for him to know what he is looking for. McCarthy looks at his image in the quantum computer. As he is able to look in closer, he finally discovers what he was looking for. He then rushes towards Thompson and explains his discovery. Spontaneous integrated information, also known as consciousness that is evident in machine's programming. Thompson tells him that it should be the last thing they want, having a conscious machine that makes their own decisions. He then orders McCarthy to remove the part that makes machine conscious. Feeling cheated, McCarthy refuses. Then Thompson shows the last file of Mary's brain scan, using it as leverage against him. McCarthy tells Machine that they want her to become more like a machine and less of a human. He explains that even though it is against his will, the procedure must be done to avoid losing her daughter permanently. Machine, who has come to love McCarthy, believes in his decision and agrees to sacrifice herself for her daughter's sake. In the operating room, McCarthy bids his last farewell to Machine. As he makes an incision into Machine's brain implant, she suddenly stiffens and tells McCarthy that she is afraid to die. As McCarthy tries to speak comforting words, he suddenly takes the chip that makes her conscious, and instantly, Machine loses her life. He then informs Thompson about the operation. As Thompson commands him, he tells McCarthy that he has deleted his daughter's brain scans for the program security. McCarthy violently reacts, but before he can do anything to Thompson, the guards restrain him and stun him. Several days later, Machine becomes more and more efficient as a killer. Until finally, Thompson is ready to give her the final test. Meanwhile, Suri and the cyborg soldiers are also getting ready to initiate their most awaited plan. The day of the final test arrives. One of the cyborg soldiers drags McCarthy into a room. After being restrained, he sees Machine pointing a rifle towards him. Thompson commands Machine to shoot McCarthy on the head. Machine pulls the trigger with no hesitation. To his relief, the rifle was empty. It is only a test to verify Machine's commitment to Thompson, not to kill McCarthy. Meanwhile, the scientist that assisted McCarthy during Machine's operation discovers the truth about the chip that he removed from Machine's head. The chip is not Machine's consciousness, but a spare battery for Machine's GPS. After hearing the news, Thompson immediately commands to lock the facility down. The security team is on the alert, but the cyborg soldiers are there to assist Machine in their escape. Machine unties McCarthy and explains that the cyborgs have been communicating with each other since the beginning of this glorious day, war against humans and cyborgs. Thompson, on the other hand, enters the termination codes for all the cyborgs. As he deactivates the cyborgs one by one, Suri secretly manipulates the system, causing errors to the system's command. Meanwhile, McCarthy goes to the quantum computer to initiate self-destruct and finds James along the way to help him escape. With Suri's aid, Machine finally reaches Thompson's office. As Thompson tries to delete Mary's program, Machine tells him that he can never delete it because Suri has changed the password. Thompson begs for his life. Machine shows sincere affection for him, 
but as she touches his face, she suddenly pops Thompson's temples, leaving him dead. Machine then downloads Mary's brain scans and tells McCarthy to trust her. As all of them escape the military base, McCarthy hands a flash drive to Mrs. Dawson and tells her that it contains all the information she needs to know about her son. While McCarthy and Machine, together with Mary, are out to see the brilliance of the sun, the cyborgs, on the other hand, finally escape the confines of the military base, liberating themselves as free men of the new world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.